Hello everyone, hi, welcome to the channel of Wall Street Mojo. Friends, today we are going to learn a tutorial on liquidation value. Now, unlike human beings, a company is not a natural person and its identity is different from that of owners and managers. So a death, which seems to be inevitable for human beings, is something which can be avoided from a company's point of view. Many companies go on for hundreds of years. However, even a company can shut down at either on account of law uh, mostly on account of bankruptcy or at the discretion of the management or the desire of the owners of the company. So let us look at the Fitbit's share price movement over the past few years and what we note that the Fitbit's stock plumbed by more than 90%. Now does this mean that Fitbit is now trading at all time low and is buying opportunity? Now one way is to perform a valuation check to compare Fitbit's share price with the liquidation value. Now as you can see in this particular graph, you can see the Fitbit stock has sharply declined by more than 90%. Okay, so in this particular tutorial, we are going to discuss a couple of things. Okay, and uh, we'll start with the definition first. Now, what is liquidation value? Liquidation is nothing but the process by which the company's business is brought to an end and the company is dissolved. All the assets which belongs to the company are distributed among its creators, lenders, shareholders, etc. on the basis of the seniority of the claims. Now, liquidation value is the total worth of a company's tangible assets, that is physical assets, when it goes out, of the business all the tangible assets fixed as well as the current are considered while calculating the liquidation value of the company however intangible assets such as goodwill are not included in the same now let's compare the book value versus the liquidation value of an asset see before understanding more about the liquidation value let us understand the meaning of book value of the assets of a company book value of the asset is the value at which the assets is carried on the balance sheet this is arrived by deducting the total accumulated depreciation from the total cost of acquisition a very short example on this uh, let's say there is a company ABC, okay, and uh, it it purchases a piece of uh, office furniture at a price of one lakh, okay, dollar. Apart from the purchase price, they also end up paying following expenses to bring the furniture into the required location, okay. There are some charges like uh, loading and uh, unloading, unloading charges, which is close enough to one thousand dollars, and there is some interest charges interest charges to be paid on the borrowed funds for buying the furniture which is close enough to $2500. So what is the total cost? Now we knew that there is companies ABC which has purchased the furniture. So we'll write the furniture value over here. Furniture value was close enough to 1 lakh, 1 lakh dollars. So that comes down to 1 lakh 3500 dollars. Okay. Now depreciation on the above furniture for the sake of convenience, let's say that the depreciation rate is close enough to 10%. Okay, so 10% per annum on the written down value method. So in the year one, what will be the depreciation? I'll just I'm just writing Y1 by saying what will be the depreciation for the first year that is going to be 103500 into 10%. So that is 10,350. Now for the second year, that is I'm writing Y2, it's going to be is equal to 103500, that is the initial value less the depreciation from the previous year. Okay, once you do this, you need to multiply this whole thing to 10%. So this into 10%. Once we do that, we get 9315 as a depreciation. So the book value of the piece of the office furniture at the end of the year 2 will be, that is we are talking about at the end of the year 2. So we are writing book value at the end of the year 2 of the furniture will be 103500 less the year 1 depreciation, less the year 2 depreciation, which is $83,835. So if we are taking liquidation value of the above furniture, we would be we would look more at the market value of the assets rather than the book value of the assets. The current market price, which uh, it can fetch at the end of the year 2 is $90,000, let us say. And this will be considered as the liquidation value and not $83,835, which is the book value of the asset which we have calculated. The simplest example for the above is that when a company is in the liquidation phase, it is putting an end to its business and selling its assets to pay off its debt. In this case, it is obvious that the selling price will be considered as the liquidation value and not the book value. Now, let's understand what is salvage value versus the liquidation value of an asset. Now, there is something which is known as salvage value of the asset. This again is different from the liquidation value of the assets. The salvage value is the estimated value of the asset at the end of the asset's useful life. At the time of the liquidation, the asset may or may not have reached the end of the end of its useful life and it may fetch more than its salvage value. Let's take an example of this. 
let's say the office furniture on the above example which has a useful life over here i'm just adding something that is called as a useful life as a 10 years i'm just adding something over here after which its salvage value is expected to be 5000 so i'm again adding something as salvage value as 5000 over here but as clearly seen above that the market value is close enough to 90000 again i'm adding something that is called market value 90000 dollars for the given asset it will be considered as the liquidation value so liquidation value calculation of a company the above pointers you know it helps us to understand the liquidation value of a single asset on a similar lines let us now understand how to calculate the liquidation value of the company as a whole in the simplest term liquidation value tells uh, tells you that the quantum that which will be available to the shareholder if the company were to shut down in a very short span of time so the simplest way to find out the value is to go through the following steps that i'm going to place in front of you first step is to prepare the balance sheet of the company so the first step is to prepare the prepare the balance sheet of the company okay prepare the balance sheet of the company as per the normal accounting policies okay as on the date on which you would to find out the liquidation value okay now I'll, I'll show you some example on this now this is the particular example of how the balance sheet has been prepared now like this is the balance sheet of abc limited as on the 31st december 2015 as you can see all the details how it has been prepared this is just a an example that how it is how it should be done then the second step is to find the market value of the asset market value of the tangible asset so that is going to be our second step so now you took you, you you take the tangible assets of the company and find out the market value of the same at times you know the purpose of finding the liquidation value may not necessarily be to wind up the company it can be done for analysis purpose as well in this case finding the market value for each and every asset may be inconvenient and, and many companies resort to assigning a recovery percentage to each asset i mean this has to be as close as to the market value as possible some of the some of the example of recovery ratios uh, are like follow like you know cash and bank deposits will have a recovery ratio of 100% land owned by a company in a prime area uh, may have a recovery of 150% as the land price generally appreciated in more de most developed or developing areas account receivables generally have a recovery percentage of around 65 to 70% so this is because the business is coming to an end of the company do not get by paying small amounts in case of winding up now coming back to above example let us apply above pointers to figure out the recovery ratio of the asset okay now let's take the first asset okay which was freehold land okay 50 lakh is the amount and the recovery ratio is let's say 150 percent so what is going to be a recovery value the first is what freehold land okay and its value is uh, 50 lakh let's say i'm just writing over here the value is 50 lakh and the recovery ratio is 150 percent so in this particular scenario what is going to be the recovery value so it's its value is going to be 50 lakh into 150 percent okay so that is going to be 75 lakh now this is this is the case of recovery value now the value of the land uh, in, in in the area has appreciated since the time the company had purchased it the current property prices in the area suggest that that we can earn 50 percent of the profit over and about the original purchase price since there was no depreciation in the freehold land we have applied a flat recovery ratio of 150 percent of the book value now let's take another thing uh, furniture furniture uh, its value is 12 lakh 25 thousand and its uh, recovery 12 lakh 25 thousand its recovery rate is close enough to 50 percent okay so now in this particular scenario what is going to be the recovery value or the amount into the recovery percentage so let's understand the comments on the same see the company has has found a similar second hand office furniture listed on the e-commerce website at this price that is why the company assumes that it can sell its furniture at a very same rate again let's take one more example of plant and machinery i'm just writing pnm plant and machinery its value is let's say 4 lakh 30 and uh, the recovery ratio is 25 percent so what is going to be the recovery value one lakh seven thousand five hundred so let's understand why see the machinery has been used on overtime basis over the past year the depreciated value itself is less and the company expects that they will have to sell it for a value very close to its salvage value again let's take one more let's say transportation transportation vehicles 
Now, again, the value, let's say 4,50,000 and the recovery ratio is 75%. So, in this particular scenario, what is going to be the recovery value into 75%? This is 4,50,000. Okay. Now, in this case, the company has spoken to a second-hand car dealer and the rate is determined after the consultation with, the, with them. Okay. So, this gives us the total fixed asset value that is 71,05,000 and let's say what is the recovery value? 85. So, there is a complete increase. Okay. Now, this was the case of the fixed asset. This we had discussed in case of the fixed asset details. Now, let's talk on the current asset note. Control V. We have the next that we are going to discuss is current asset. Okay. Now, in case of current asset, let's say we'll take first as daters. Okay. The daters and their value is, let's say, 3 lakh. And the recovery rate is 75%. So, recovery value will be 2 lakh 25,000. So, as mentioned earlier, small timers don't end up paying their debts. If the company is going to liquidate and they will never have to worry about the future orders with them, a prudent estimate is that they will be able to fetch 75% from the data. Let's take another example of inventory. And in case of inventory, let's say the value is close enough to, for inventory we will bifurcate as raw material. Raw material has value of, uh, let's say 1,70. The recovery rate is 90%. So I'll just copy the formula here. So recovery value is 1,53. Thousand. See, raw material lying in the goods will fetch a very good value as it is not very uh, aged inventory. So, we can fairly assume that the fresh stock can be sold in the market at 100% of its value. Let's take one more that is called WIP that is work in progress. So, work in progress 1,25,000. The recovery rate is just 5%. So, control D. The value is 6250. The company does not want to spend its time on, on its resources in completing the work in progress and it intends to sell the work in progress inventory as a scrap and the scrap value will fetch only 5% of the total value. The final is the finished goods that is FG finished goods. Its value is 3 lakh and the recovery rate is 90%. So let's do control D. So value is 2 lakh 70. Finished goods should fetch 100%, but considering the time frame to liquidate the goods, the company might offer discount, which is why the recovery ratio is close enough to 90%. The next is the balance in bank. Let's say the balance in bank is 70,000 and recovery ratio is completely 100%. So it's going to be 70,000. See, bank balance is also very liquid and it will definitely fetch 100%. However, at times there are very, there are charges on the closure of the account the next is cash 5000 value 100% recovery rate and the value is going to be 5000 cash is already liquid and there is no point of applying a recovery rate to this particular thing prepaid insurance prepaid insurance okay in case of prepaid insurance the value is 10000 let's say and 0% uh, is the recovery rate so it's going to be zero Okay, now the company has already paid the prepaid insurance for its stock and on closure of the business, the insurance company will not pay back the premium and it is a kind of a loss which the company will have to suffer and hence the recovery ratio is zero. So let's make a total of all of this and see what, what comes down to is equal to sum. Just let's add all this and over here to is equal to sum and let's add all of this and let's see what is the amount, final amount. As you can see, 9,80,000 was it uh, original amount and the recovery is 7,29,250. Now, since from the, I mean, this this whole data that we took, I mean, we, we got to know that how this particular things have worked, have been worked out. Now, since the liquidation value does not take into account the intangible assets, the market value of all the intangible assets will be marked as zero. Okay. So, this is how you you have calculated all the details in the above example. I mean, there are no intangible assets like goodwill, but the company should have taken the recovery ratio zero percent, just like the prepaid insurance. Step three is the liquidation value of the liability. What is the step three? It is the liquidation value of the liability. Uh, I'm just uh, writing. Oh, it's fine. Now, from the total liquidation value of all the assets, you need to subtract all the liabilities. There is no point of calculating the market value of the liabilities because unlike assets, there will be no separate book value and the market value. 
you will have to end up paying the entire amount of the reflecting in the balance sheet. Step 4 will be calculating the net liquidation value that is the assets minus liability. The net amount delivered from the amount will be liquidation value of the company which will be available to the shareholders. This is possibly the or especially in case of the bankrupt companies that the liquidation value may be negative which means that the company does not have through enough enough assets to repay its lender. In this case the lenders will, will be paid on the basis of the priority of the claims they hold on the assets of the company. Let us drill down the above example on the ABC Limited to determine how to arrive on the final liquidation value of the different stakeholders. Okay. Now let's calculate the total liquidation value of the assets. Okay. And the current liabilities. Just for a short example, the liquidation value of the assets. I'm just writing assets over here 92 lakh 86,750 less the current liabilities that is 10 lakh 50,000. Which will, uh, which will give us the amount available for the debt fund investors. This will be the liabilities which will give us the amount for the amount available for debt investors. Once we get this, V is equal to assets minus liability. This is the amount. In this case, the debt fund of the company is only 4,50,000 as opposed to the total 82,36,750 available as liquidation value. This is a very good positive sign for the company because in most cases, the company is not even... I mean, it is not even able to pay its current liabilities to its fullest extent. Of this, you will deduct something that is less the amount outstanding towards debt fund, and that is going to be four lakh fifty. And uh, we'll have any amount that is available for the preference shareholders. Amount available for, I'm just writing over here as PSC preference shareholders. That is seventy seven eighty six seven fifty. Again, here the amount available for the preference shareholder is more than the value of the preference share, which is just 15 lakhs. So we may pay them in full in the net value of the amount available to the equity shareholders. Now, out of all of this, you have got that how things have been calculated. Now, let's go into a very quick example of Fitbit's liquidation example value. Okay, Fitbit stock has been taken a beating in the in the last few quarters as, as seen in the graph. As you can see in this particular graph, I mean, uh, things are visible. You can, uh, step one is to first, as we, as we know that, you know, you need to download the balance sheet. Okay. As you can see the step one over here, we have downloaded the balance sheet. We know the value of the total assets, the value of the total liabilities, which is important to us. Then the step two is find the liquidation value of the Fitbit's asset in order to find the value liquidation value of the Fitbit's assets, we assigned recovery rate to each class of the assets. Now, reason for the recovery rate was discussed in the earlier example. Cash and cash equivalent and marketable security is assigned as 100% recovery rate. Account receivable is assigned to a recovery rate of 75%. Inventory was 50%. Prepaid expense, zero. Property plan and equipment is assigned recovery rate of 25%. Other assets is assigned a recovery rate of 50%. Goodwill intangible assets and deferred tax assets is assigned a recovery rate of 0%. Let's look at some details on this. Now, as you can see the data, the recovery rate, and uh, this is the recovery rate. This is the amount and this is the recovery amount. That is how, remember, we had calculated in our example. This is the clear case study where we are trying to handle the things of a live example of the case study. Step three is to find the liquidation value of the Fitbit's liability. We have assumed that all the liabilities have to be paid out in full and each type of liability is therefore assigned a recovery rate of 100%. As you can see over here, the total liability in the stockholders equity, which is given to us is the same way that we had to calculate it, which gives us the total liquidation value of the Fitbits liabilities. That is 5,73,122. Okay. And step four, that is we need to calculate the net liquidation value of the Fitbit. Now, net, what is the net liquidation value of the formula? The net liquidation value formula is liquidation value of the assets less the liquidation value of the liabilities, which is... 115 lakh 44,033 less the value of the liability which gives us the total value as uh, 5 lakh 81,312 that is the value of the total uh, net net liquidation value. Finally find out the per share liquidation value of the uh, Fitbit. In order to find out the per share liquidation value we require the total number of the shares outstanding. We note that you know the total number of the basic share outstanding is 2 lakh 22,412 which is right in front of us. Liquidation value of the shares is going to be how much? The net asset that we had calculated 581.312 divided by the total number of shares which gives us the liquidation value per share. So Fitbit is trading close.
Now, based on this, it implies that the Fitbit's trading is very close to its liquidation value. And if the stocks fall further, it will be a pie condition. Now, you can use a tangible book value as a proxy to the liquidation value. The tangible book value is calculated by subtracting all the intangible assets like goodwill, patent, corporate, etc. from the book value of the firm. So, tangible book value formula will be what? Book value of all the assets less the book value of all the liabilities less the intangible assets. Let's compare the tangible book value uh, formula with, the, with that of the liquidation value formula. The liquidation value formula is liquidation value of the assets less the liquidation value of the liability while the liquidation value of the liability is equal to the book value of the liability. So the formula for the above it becomes like the liquidation value of the formula is value of the assets liquidation value of the assets less the book value of the liability. Got it? So that is the catch over here. Now coming to the calculation of the liquidation value of the assets the sum of the recovery of the each assets into the book value of the assets. In this formula, we assume that the recovery rate of the intangible assets is 0%. This removes the intangible assets from the liquidation value of the assets. For the other assets, the recovery is 100%. Okay. And therefore, the liquidation value of the asset is less than the book value of the assets. The book value of the assets less the intangible assets. We note that even though the liquidation value is less than the tangible book value, it is greater proxy of the identifying stock that are trading close to the liquidation value. Using price to tangible book value ratio, it provides us with relatively valuation, a relative valuation multiple for making such comparison. If the price to the tangible book value ratio is less than 1, then the share price is trading below its tangible book value. This implies that if the company is liquidation liquidated today, then the shareholders will be will, will profit from the higher tangible book value. If the price to the tangible book value is greater than 1, then the share price is trading above the tangible book value. This implies that if the company is liquidated today, the shareholder will the shareholders will be at loss. Let us pick some practical example where the tangible book value or the liquidation value is greater than the share price. There is this company called Noble Corp. The, we'll, we'll, we will just check some things over there. Now take a look at the Noble Corp price to tangible book value. The Noble Corp owns and operates advanced fleets in the offshore drilling industry. As you can see in the graph, the Noble Corp price to tangible book value has been consistently decreasing. Noble Corp tangible book value was about 1x in 2012-2013. Due to the slowdown in the commodity oil, Noble Corp stock price plummeted from high 32.5 in July 2013 to 6.87 currently. This resulted in the share price decrease in the price to tangible book value and is current and is currently trading at 0.23x. As you can see the Noble Corp share price has been consistently decreasing. It has a, it has a consistent decrease. Okay. Now there is likewise there is another example of a, a tran, tran ocean, trans ocean price to tangible book value and the liquidation value. We have to look at the Transocean's price to tangible book value. Now, Transocean is an offshore drilling contractor and is based on the it's based on Switzerland. Let's see the graph. As you can see, the rig prices to the tangible book value ratio has again it has been decreasing. We note a similar trend in the Transocean price to tangible book value in 2013. The Transocean was trading at the price of tangible book value of 1.62x. Uh, however, it has sharply declined to 0.361x currently Transocean is another example where the liquidation value is greater than that of the stock price. Let us now pick some other example where the liquidation value is negative. Uh, heard about the name Fiat Chrysler tangible book value liquidation value. Stock with the negative liquidation value implies that if the if this companies are liquidated today the shareholder will not be able to recover their investment. Let's take the uh, Fiat's Chrysler example. The free, uh, Fiat's price to book value ratio was 0.966x. However, its price to tangible book value was minus 2.08x. This implies that if the Fiat is to liquidate today, the shareholders will not recover their money. I mean, forget about profiting from the investment. Let's see the graph of the same. As you can see, the Fiat's price to book value ratio 966 and uh, the tangible book value ratio as uh, minus 2.08x. Uh, I hope you have got fantastic viewpoint on this particular tutorial. Thank you everyone.